Hello everyone at CommanderCast.com and our YouTube channel, CommanderCast, the YouTube channel thing. This is Rachel, and we're here with another episode of the Alpha Bill with Avacyn, Guardian Angel. And this week's installment, we have Weatherlight. So, we have what it's, let's see, if I'm looking at this correctly, the second biggest installment since Mirage, it looks like. I'm going to double check that real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, because we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 cards. Not quite beating Mirage's 17, but definitely the second biggest update we've had so far. And just, it's interesting the kind of stuff that gets updated in here. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. First of all, let's go ahead and go into the lands. Boop. Alright, so first off, we've gone ahead and put in Scorched Ruins. Take that out, take out that freaking crew for this. So Scorch Runes. If Scorch Runes would enter the battlefield, sack two untapped lands instead. If you do, put Scorch Runes onto the battlefield. If you don't, put it into its owner's graveyard. So it still has the same clause as the crew that, you know, you have to sack untapped lands. Fortunately, they don't have to be, you know, planes. So we can go ahead and sack other lands, like maybe if we've got down our Measures Workshop and it's not really doing anything for us anymore because we've already played some artifacts. We can go ahead and cash that in for something else. You know, we're going to have enough land drops just be from playing stuff like Land Tax and Tithe and uh, Gift of Estates. And this is another good way. This is actually a decent way to trigger those effects. So it's going to ramp us and get us help enable our engines a little more. So I actually like that quite a lot. Plus, we're turning three lands into four mana. Granted, it's colorless mana, but we've seen that Avacyn is a huge mana sink. You know, she just eats a lot of mana in order to keep up her limit break. So this will be interesting to see if we can go ahead and use this to help power that out. It can also help power out some of our more expensive stuff like our dragons, you know, maybe some other artifacts, stuff like that. We'll see how that turns out. But this next one is probably a bigger addition. Winding Canyons. It makes colors on its own, so it's actually... You know, it's going to fold the, uh, the same thing as Crystal Vein, which I took out for this. But it has pay to and tap. Until end of turn, you may play creatures as though they had flash. And that's going to be really big for us. It means that we can go ahead, you know, play a much more open it, you know, much more reactive game. Go ahead and set up board states after, you know, we've been hit by wrath effects or something like that. We don't have to go ahead and just catch the dragon, you know, for a block. And we just go ahead and for the extra three mana, go ahead and cast the dragon at instant speed. You know, we can go ahead and you know, cast Avis at the end of their turn, so be ready to start swinging. And that kind of minimizes the amount of time that our creatures are going to be spent out. It also lets us go ahead and flash in, you know, just some future instant speed answers. Like, you know, when we get to Innistrad block, we'll have a um, Fiend Hunter, so we'll have an instant speed of Living Ring for six mana, basically. So we get, there's some, a lot of cool things that you can do with Winding Cans. If you have a, a real creature-based deck, and you're not, and your goal isn't to tap out every turn, this is actually a fantastic Conclusion that you can include in most creature decks. So moving on to the rest, let's go ahead and scoot back over there. First thing, one drops. Kithkin Armor. It's a one mana aura. Chanted creature can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. Incidentally, along the same thing that Meek Stone kind of does. So we're giving Avacyn some pretty good invasion here. Kithkin Armor also has Sacrifice It. The next time a Sorcery Choice would deal damage to Enchanted Creature this turn, prevent that damage. So it's a good way to help Avacyn, you know, maybe act, act as a chump blocker, sacrifice the armor, and, get, and, you know, keep her around. You can go ahead and use it to protect from red wraths, you know, just stuff like that. The thing I... I'm just going to try and change my direction and my thinking for this. My original thinking was that we were just going to be like a, uh, kind of a white flyers deck. You know, try and go over to the top and stuff like that. You know, and then there's the idea that we could just play, you know, white politics with Avacyn, but that's really more of a paper thing where you can actually, you know, just hang out with friends and all and all that. You know, I don't actually want to have like elongated conversations in the chat box just because that doesn't make for great video play. But with Avacyn, you almost have to treat her like a Voltron commander because you want to protect her, you want to have her cane around so that she can protect you. So with that being said, I do think that we are going to start shifting this deck to kind of a pseudo- Voltron route, which of course means that we have to have all the combinations of a Voltron deck. 
you know, equipment don't exist at this point in time. You know, we're, right now we're in rather light. We're going into Tempest next. And equipment doesn't come around until Mirrodin. So that's going to be a few more blocks at least. Fortunately, though, we do have a few things to go ahead and work with. And Kithkin Armor is one of them. So I was already liking how the Ward of Lights was giving Avacyn evasion so that she could get through and punch for damage. The Kithkin Armor is much along those lines. Only... It's got different uses than the Ward of Lights. It's a great way to turn potential defense into alright offense and to help Avacyn get in there. Because right now Avacyn is our win condition. So while we're talking about making Avacyn the win condition, let's go ahead and skip the two drops and jump over to the Imperial Armor, which is another aura. Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one for each card in your hand. In a blue-white deck, you know, you'll see this a lot in like the, uh, the Bruna, the original Bruna... Uh, Voltron commander decks where they just drop a bunch of stuff and they already have a, a million cards in hand so Bruna gets really stupid big so with the land tax and the library of yeah the the land tax and the library of lane you know we can go ahead and have a lot of cards in hand this isn't going to do a lot if it's only like one or two cards in our hand but that is still enough to get Avacyn into like three shot range if we have at least two cards in hand at all times so the Imperial Armor is going to help buff Avacyn. It's going to help her make her, you know, just a stronger win condition. You know, I thought about putting in a Divine Transformation back in. But as you'll see, you know, we just don't have a lot of things I actually want to cut for that. You know, I actually ended up cutting stuff out that, you know, I do like. But it either just wasn't doing as much as I wanted to be doing right now. Which means it will probably come back later when we do have a much more accommodating deck for it. Or it just wasn't really doing, you know, or it's just going to be a permanent sacrifice of we need to give up some defensive power to increase our offensive power because that's what we need to close out the games. We're hanging around because we're not doing a whole lot. Other people are becoming much bigger threats a lot faster, so they're getting dealt with more. And we're just kind of the, you know, if they need to hit someone, then people are going to hit us. But so far, we've been hanging around games, partly because of Avacyn's limit break. She keeps us around much more often than we have any right to be. And with that, we just lose because we can't close that game. So hopefully Imperial Armor will help us give us that push. Alright then, so Ambience. It's a two-minute instant. It looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? Until end of turn, target player can't cast instants or sorcery spells, and that player can't activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. Draw a card. So first of all, it's a cantrip. Second of all, it's almost Orem Silence. Orem Silence, your opponent can't cast spells or attack until the end of the turn. This is something that goes really well underneath the Isochron Scepter. One, because you continuously draw cards. It has the cantrip writer. Two, you can continuously just shut people out of certain things. Now, it's not Orm Silence, because they can still cast enchantments, artifacts. <sighs> they can still attack. They can still try and punch us in the face. But at the very least, this does shut down some options. And I want... And I did want to try this out. There were some cards in here that I ended up cutting just to try out new cards. And if they don't work out, then I can always swap them back. So I'm going to be modifying the to watch list on the tapped out link that you can check out in the show in the uh, the notes below. Ambience, just one of those things I did want to, tr to try out. I'm very much interested in White's preventive measures. I don't like them because it doesn't deal with things that hit the, the table. But White has a very uh, White is very much the Let's go ahead and, and deal with things before they happen. Since, you know, a pound of medicine is worth an ounce of caution. So what was it? An ounce, an ounce, of, an ounce of safety is a pound of cure. Something like that. So, Angelic Renew is, another, is a pet card of mine. It's a two-man enchantment that says, Whenever a creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may sacrifice Angelic Renew. If you do, return that card to the battlefield. So we've got a number of ways to go ahead and bring back our small so motley crew of creatures back from the graveyard now. And Jero Nero is one of my fa favorites. It's one of those ones that we can send the field. We can swap Avacyn over to, hey, if she goes to, if she dies, send her to the graveyard, not the command zone, because then Jero Nero can go ahead and just bring her back. And you also have some very nice art by Rebecca Gray right there. It was something I actually ran in Kalia quite a, a bit. You know, just because you get bigger creatures that come down, and then they die, and so you can sacrifice the Angelic Renewal and bring them back. And it's great if you have stuff like the Sun Titan, it's fine in the Safi Eric Starter deck, because it's just kind of some uh, redundancy there. And there's a lot of ways to get enchantments back from the graveyard, especially in later sets. 
So, in general, it was one that I'm really happy be to, you know, finally get to start play Destiny a, a lot more. Glad that we got to see it earlier rather than later, because I don't know that it would necessarily be able to squeeze in later. Going on, we have Mind Stone. So this is what replaced the Fell War Stone. Fell War Stone could incidentally just get us white, but was more or less just a guaranteed colorless. This is kind of the same thing, only we can sacrifice it later to draw a card. You know, we ended up cutting the Arche Archaeologist, but in a more artifact-focused deck, you could theoretically... You know, get this back and start trying to loop if you didn't have any other ways to draw a card. It's not the best way to get card advantage, but this is one of those things where it's like, early game you like it because it's a mana rock. Late game, if you have enough, if you finally have enough mana but you just need more cards, you do cash it in to get a card. The quest, the skill tester is just when do you actually cash it out? Because there are times where, you know, I've gotten over eager to draw an extra card because I'm in panic mode or something like that, and I ended up not having enough mana to do everything I need to do later in the game. Versus, I overvalued the mana that I have right now, and I think I have enough cards, but I really should have popped it sooner, because, you know, something just happens to it. And I'm a big fan of tapping mana rocks before lands, just because rocks are much more uh, fragile. You know, they're more likely to get blown up than lands are. But with the Mind Stone, this one is one that I actually hold off on, just in case there is something that, you know, would destroy all the artifacts, so I can still pop it and get my card back. So we're going to see how that works out. So we already went over the Imperial ar Armor. We've got Peacekeeper, which was apparently something close to like an $8 card on Moto. That was interesting for me to find out. It's a 3-mana human. For, it's a 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of your upkeep, you sack it unless you pay 2. Creatures can't attack. This isn't the Meek Stone, you know, power, Creatures Power 3 or Greater Dawn Tap or the, the, the Moats. Creatures with Flying can't attack. No, this is just straight creatures can't attack, period. And that's actually got some very nice, um, well, well, not, not ramifications. It's a very, it's better than the sustained spirit that we had, because the sustained spirit was the community of upkeep, so the cost would just keep increasing. This one has a flat cost. You know, you pay two mana every turn, and he's going to stick around. Well, no. Let's see, I've always imagined my mother is such a woman, strong and wise. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a woman, okay. So she's definitely going to help hold off the attacks. Maybe if we can go ahead and drop her and they aren't able to deal, deal with her, then Avacyn could go ahead and take a break for a turn. We can go ahead and set up some other boards, something like that. So this would be... I'm just... Part of me is just not sure why this is an $8 card on Moto. But... Ooh, hmm. I hope she sticks around long enough for us to find out. This next one, though, is much more utilitarian. Aura of Silence is a very nice card to have. It's a three-man challenge, so you can get it back with, like, the Sun Titan. You know, basically anything that could be get back the Angel Nero, you can get back with this. But this one's, a, this one's a lot more relevant. Artifacts and enchantment spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast. So, one, it's throwing on attacks. Two, it has sacrifice an aura or si sacrifice aura of silence, destroy target artifact or enchantment. So, they have to pay more to drop it. And if it's something really important, you can just pop this aura of silence in order to get rid of it. I'm not quite sure what the thinking was behind this design. I need to go back and listen to Rosewater's podcast about Weatherlight. That he, do, you know, Rosewater would do like uh, design stories based on like blocks and all that. I'm pretty sure he did Weatherlight already, the Mirage block. But Aura of Silence is a fantastic card to have. It's a very powerful white staple. There's really no reason to run it in a mono white deck if you have any just sort of recursion or slight enchantment theme or anything like that. It's a fantastic card to run. It's a dis it's gonna be our second disenchant. It's gonna slow down the rest of the game. It comes down just early enough to slow everyone else down. So this is a card that I'm expecting to stick around until the final product. Because it's really gonna it's gonna be hard pressed to just get rid of this thing. It's gonna be a rattlesnake card, it's gonna dissuade people from playing some of the stuff. Yeah, it's just it's it's good card. It's a very good card. I did almost cut the Jalone Tome for it. But the Tome I think deserves a little more testing. I haven't seen it a whole lot. And looting is just a very powerful effect. T pay two, draw a card, then discard the card you like the least. I almost did cut this. But in the end, we are trying to find more filtering, more drawing power. Just, I feel like I deserve a couple more more games before I decide to ask for sure. I'm just, I'm just not seeing it. Alright, and so the final card that we have today is Moose Min, Moose, Min, Mist, not Moose, Moose and Squared are uh, not here today. But we do have Mist Moon Griffin. Mist Moon Griffin is a 2 2 flyer, which is pretty mediocre. But when Mist Moon Griffin. When Mist Moon. When Moose Griffin 
You know, we'll just, you know, for now on your Moose Griffin. Whenever Moose Griffin dies, exile Moose Griffin, then return the top creature card of your graveyard to the battlefield. Ah! I hate your name already, Moose. Alright then. So, another way to just grab creatures back from the graveyard. This is more of a, hey, let's see if, you know, getting back creatures is going to be as relevant. Part of the reason I did keep the Jalone Tome was because there is a neat little interaction where the trigger goes on the stack and go ahead and use the Tome, draw a card, and then discard something really big like the Archangel or the Seraph, the Alabaster Dragon, just something like that. And then we can go ahead and, you know, just cheat it out for free. So I'm going to see if we can actually get something like that going on. So overall, yeah, like I said, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 lands. So 11 cards, not as big as Barrage, but currently the second biggest update I had, you know, not including the initial alpha draft, and that's why I'm saying updates. Don't argue semantics with me, young man. All right, then. So I think that about does it. Let's see. Go ahead to go to the cuts real quick, just to make sure we get this out of the way. You know, Bless Reversal. Disempower is actually what I cut out for the Aura Sounds. I'm sorry. Sorry. That, that's one of those things where it's like a strict slot upgrade for me, where we can go ahead and go, okay, this is a removal spell. Let's go ahead and look at our removal spells right now. Oh, hey, this is actually just better than that. Let's go ahead and take that out. You know, we took out the Thalden's Kang. Just, you know, I want to believe that, that shuffling a bunch of stuff in the graveyard is going to be really good for us, but we have enough stuff that can grab stuff out of the graveyard right now that I don't think it was worth keeping as a slot. You know, Thor Stone got upgraded to Mind Stone. We took out Sissi's Ring, not because I think it's a horrible card, just I wasn't sure where else to actually cut. Inheritance I did cut because I didn't want it fighting for mana with Avacyn. It was slightly annoying to have all those triggers go off when I didn't have any mana, but yeah. And we did cut the Arc... You know, reverse damage is one that I cut for the ambience, and <clears throat> reverse damage is back on. It's just he's just, it's just gonna go on the uh, the maybe list until such a time that I think I would want want it back. It depends on how much I miss it. Like I, I liked it; it was an all right card. I just don't know if I want it around forever. All right, and that is all the updates for the weatherlight. So let's go ahead and go play some games. Stay tuned.